Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Gregory Wilbert, joining you from Quito, Ecuador. This coming Sunday, Germans will head to the polls to elect a new Bundestag, as its parliament is known. Chancellor Angela Merkel's party, the Christian Democratic Union, is leading in opinion polls with between 36 and 39 percent of the vote. The big unknown at the moment is whether there will be a repeat of a coalition with the Social Democratic Party or whether there will be a switch to a coalition with several smaller parties, such as the pro-business liberals and maybe even the Green Party. Having the environmentalist Green Party join a coalition by the center-right might seem odd, but Angela Merkel enjoys a reputation for being an environmentalist, especially ever since the government decided to phase out nuclear power in Germany by 2022. One prominent critic, though, argues that Merkel's environmental reputation is completely undeserved. As a matter of fact, he even considers her to have one of the worst environmental records in the world. George Monbiot is a critic and uh, recently wrote a column laying out this critique of Merkel in The Guardian. George is the author of many best-selling books on the environment and globalization. His latest book is Out of the Wreckage, A New Politics for the Age of Crisis. He joins us today from Wales. George, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. That's my pleasure. So as you write in your column, Angela Merkel enjoys a reputation for being an environmentalist of sorts. I mentioned uh, her government's decision to phase out nuclear power and to replace it with nuclear, uh, to replace it with renewable energy. Um, and uh, Germany's generation of renewable energy now makes, about, uh, makes up about one third of uh, Germany's energy production. Still, you argue that um, this must be weighed against her other actions. What are some of the most egregious things that she has done to deserve the title of leading eco-vandal, as you call her? Well, um, let's stick with um, the first, um, the, uh, as the first example, the thing you've just mentioned, um, which is Germany's production of electricity. Um, and it's absolutely true, there's been this massive investment in renewables, uh, but it's also the case that Germans, uh, the, 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 um, Germany's carbon emissions from electricity have plateaued, while those in the rest of Europe have declined sharply. And the reason for this is that um, she's allowed the coal industry, particularly lignite, brown coal, which is the most polluting of all forms of coal and one of the worst fuels you could use uh, for any purpose, uh, she's allowed that to run riot and it um, continues to produce some 40% of Germany's electricity with massive greenhouse gas emissions as well as loads of other forms of pollution as a result. Um, her decision to close down nuclear power I, I think is in itself questionable because um, uh, that was at the time Germany's major source of, of low carbon energy and to shut it down during a climate change emergency uh, when climate breakdown is taking place, knowing that fossil fuels would fill part of the gap, well, I think that's quite irresponsible, but that's by no means the worst. Because alongside the problems with the electricity industry are uh, the even bigger problems uh, that she's imposed not just on Germany, but on the rest of Europe when it comes to transport. Tell us actually more about the transport issue, because, uh, I mean, actually two years ago, it was quite widely uh, covered, actually, uh, about the scandal, uh, the diesel scandal and Volkswagen, when they, when it was revealed that Volkswagen had manipulated engine software to provide false exhaust readings on its automobiles. What has happened to uh, the use of diesel uh, in Germany since then, and what was uh, Angela Merkel's involvement? Sure. Well, so the original European decision to switch from petrol to diesel happened before she was German Chancellor. And it was a classic European fudge where they said, well, we know what we really need to do, which is to move away from liquid fuel powered cars altogether and move to electric vehicles or better still move to transport systems which aren't entirely dependent on the private car, which should have far lower environmental impacts. But we've got the car manufacturers, particularly the German car manufacturers, breathing down our necks. So we'll do a fudge and we'll um, say, uh, well, because we believe that diesel has lower carbon emissions than petrol, we'll encourage people to switch through the taxation system to diesel. Well, it now turns out that diesel doesn't have lower emissions than petrol. The whole thing was based on a mistake anyway. But what we knew then and know now to an even greater extent is that diesel engines cause far worse air pollution. And thousands of people a year are dying across Europe as a result 
of um, the switch to diesel. Now, um, Merkel ensured that that switch remained and that um, diesel engines remain one of our main means of transportation right across Europe with devastating consequences for people's health. And she has lobbied fiercely and often by the most dirty imaginable means, threatening people with all sorts of consequences in other European governments if they do not allow this special exemption, tax exemption for diesel engines to continue um, so that the great European fudge can continue. And, um, and, and she has been very clear, even to this day, um, that she will oppose any means to shut down the amount of diesel engines and the amount of diesel pollution which is going into the air, um, including um, uh, waging war effectively against German cities which are trying to exclude diesel engines in order to protect people's health. So that's one problem. But there's an even worse one that she's uh, directly responsible for. And that is that in 2007, the um, uh, European Union tried to introduce a much better fuel economy standard for cars so that they would produce um, lower carbon emissions per mile per kilometer traveled. Um, and, um, and she was lobbied by the German car manufacturers. And you know, this is her fatal weakness, industrial lobbyists. She just rolls over whenever they want something. And so in turn, she again used these very bullying tactics to ensure that that um, fuel economy standard was not introduced. And instead, with her blessing and, and um, her support, uh, the European Union said, all right, then we won't um, ensure that car engines are more efficient. What we'll do instead is to substitute some of the fuel with biofuels. Now, many of us warned at the time that this would be even worse than fossil fuels, that we would see mass deforestation, mass environmental destruction and mass greenhouse gas pollution as a result of this switch. We were completely ignored by both Merkel and by the European Union. And the result today is that much of our fleet of cars in, in uh, right across Europe is powered with the help of biodiesel from Indonesia, um, from the palm oil plantations, which have been replacing rainforests there at the most horrendous rate. It's possibly the biggest environmental crisis on Earth. It's been wiping out the habitat of orangutans, of tigers, of rhinos, of elephants, of, of gibbons, of thousands and thousands of species found nowhere else. Um, and it has been causing far greater greenhouse gas emissions even than fossil fuels do because of the burning of the forests and the drying out of the, of the peat on which those forests grow. And the result has been this huge environmental disaster driven by Merkel's fake green policy. And she is more responsible for that disaster than anyone else on Earth. And when you put those three things together, and there are quite a few others you could add to the list, I feel she comes across as the world's number one eco-villain. And I know that sounds crazy, especially with Donald Trump in office, Sure, he'll probably take her place very soon um, when his pol policies are fed through. But, you know, it's not what you do on paper that counts when it comes to environmental destruction. It's the actual physical, tangible impacts of what you do. And while on paper she looks great, she's the climate chancellor, she's got a lot of credibility, the actual impact of her policies has been a planetary disaster. Actually, that's uh, one of the interesting contrasts between her and Donald Trump. Is Donald Trump is right, blatant out there about it, about you know increasing coal production and about uh, you know opening the Arctic wildlife refuge and about all kinds of pulling out of the openly pulling out of the climate accord and things like that. Whereas Angela Merkel is much more subtle, it seems. And I'm just wondering if you have any thoughts about how she manages to re uh, to maintain this reputation given the record that you've uh, just talked about. It's a very good question um, because uh, she has got this reputation. It, you know, she's got a very good reputation. People were amazed when I pointed the finger at her and said she could have done more damage than any other living person on Earth to um, to the living planet. People were absolutely staggered and, and found it hard to believe until they saw the evidence which I lined up. And that's because she does a very good public relations job. She probably has some very good people working for her but burnishing her image but she's also 
she's she exudes trust she's got that sort of strong um stern approach which um, makes people want to believe in her and 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 she says all the right things and she's said brilliant things at various un climate summits at the g7 meetings at the g20 meetings and she's pushed people to sign up to strong targets and the rest of it and so everyone thinks oh she's great but when you look at what she actually does the gulf between rhetoric and action could not be greater and so you're quite right that is the difference between donald trump at least with donald trump you can see him coming he 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 says he's going to do all the bad stuff and then he does the bad stuff she says she's going to do a lot of good stuff and then she does the bad stuff just quickly to uh, return to the issue of what uh, German policy, I mean, uh, what um, what do you think that uh, Germany, if just to stick to the topic of diesel again, what do you think German ought to do, Germany ought to do in that regard? I mean, especially considering that hundreds of thousands of jobs in Germany depend on diesel uh, and the whole industry around it, which is presumably one of the reasons, aside from lobbying, of course, but the other one being to protect uh, uh, employment in that sector. What do you think Germany could be doing to uh, ensure a transition that doesn't displace too many people? Well, those jobs don't depend on diesel. Um, it, it, sure, they depend at the moment on car manufacturing. Um, but she should embrace the future of car manufacturing, not the past of car manufacturing. The past evidently is diesel because it's caused a public health emergency it, right across Europe. Um, and we can't tolerate it. We're going to have to stop having all those diesel engines pumping out pollution. So why stick with a failed model, which is obviously going to collapse? Uh, it can't be sustained. Why not have this mass movement to electric vehicles? And instead, she's allowing China and the US and other parts of the world to steal a march on those German car manufacturers, leaving them behind in the dust. Well, that's, that's bad economic policy. That's bad policy for jobs, quite aside from being bad environmental policy. Now. If, you know, there, there are two ways of going about this. One is to do a switch towards the cars of the future, which are going to be electric vehicles. And the other is to do a switch towards the transport systems of the future, which could mean far fewer electric, far fewer cars of any kind, but a far more sensible, efficient transport system involving public mass transit, which then employs far more people even than car manufacturing does because you need people constantly to staff that mass transit but it has a far lower environmental footprint now she should be looking towards the future as opposed to desperately trying to give the old failed model as much scope as possible which will mean that german industry will fall behind everybody else's All right uh, just one last question. As I mentioned in the introduction, members of the Green Party in Germany have expressed interest in joining the Christian Democrats in a coalition. Uh, what would be your reaction to such a move by the Green Party? Well, if they do, maybe it would be a good thing. I mean, yeah, we everybody accepts that Merkel is going to win this election. Um, maybe it would be a good thing to have the Greens in that coalition so that they could um, start to push back some of those disastrous policies and demand some much better ones. Um, I, certainly from what I can see, the German Green Party are the only ones who have consistently um, um, criticised some of those damaging policies that she's been pursuing. So perhaps that would be a good thing. Okay. Well, uh, hopefully we'll come back to you again. I was talking to uh, George Monbiot, the author of Out of the Wreckage, A New Politics for an Age of Crisis. Uh, thanks for having joined me, George. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thanks very much indeed. And thank you for watching The Real News Network.